Okay, uh, I'd like to call the meeting to order. It's March 26, 2024. It's about three minutes past seven. Um, as far as uh, in attendance, the members, all members are present except for one Lawson. And with that, we'll uh, stand up and pledge your allegiance. Christine, if you could start us out. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Next on the thing is the student representative report. Sarah, take it away. Good evening, everyone. Today was the first day of the ELA MCAS for sophomores. That starts their MCAS journey and they'll finish somewhere in May. Freshmen are currently in their final shop explore and will be choosing their permanent shop in the upcoming days. Even though the weather is a bit cold, spring sports are well underway and we're looking forward to another exciting season. I speak for the tennis team saying we're looking to earn our fifth straight CAC championship title. The sophomore semi is scheduled for April 5th, junior prom May 30th at the Burlington Marriott, and senior prom May 10th at the Castleton in Wyndham, New Hampshire. Last Thursday, 36 new students were inducted in the Shoshin Tech's National Honor Society and National Technical Honor Society. We had our Skills USA ceremony on Monday, and I'm happy to report that we won 66 medals. We brought home 21 gold, 27 silver, and 18 bronze. Out of the 66, 56 students will move on to the state conference. Congratulations to our Director of Academics, Ms. Danica Johnston, who was recognized at the National Education 2.0 Conference in Las Vegas, Nevada on Monday, March 28th. She earned their Outstanding Leadership Award. Another congratulations to our school librarian, Ms. Katie McGinnis, for earning the School Library Association's 2023 President's Award. Ms. McGinnis was awarded this award on Sunday, March 17th at the annual MSLA conference. On March 14th, with the help of my teachers and administ administrators here at Shasheen, I was honored by MAVA and Massachusetts DESE as USCTE Presidential Scholar nominee for the state of Massachusetts. Students are chosen, chosen based on their accomplishments in many areas, academic, leadership, and involvement in their community and represent excellence, excellence in education and a promise of greatness in America's youth. Thank you, and go Rams. Thank you. Oh, Thank you. Just, to, just to build on Sarah, Sarah is one of five students statewide that was recognized as a CTE scholar. So um, it was it was nice to, to have Sarah and she actually brought one of her instructors with her down at the ceremony. Um, um, week from Thursday. I forget the exact date when it was, but uh, congratulations, Sarah. I mean, that's that's quite an achievement um, to, to be one of the, one of the nominees, so nice job. And next, just on Danica's accomplishment, is there something we could do, like, to advertise that out? Like, maybe there's something we could do, like, the school could put on, or that, to me, that's a huge accomplishment. Which is we are working on a press release to be pushed out. <laughs> it has, I know it's been on social media, um, but I have I have Miss Camerata working on something more formal to send out as well. Is there some like event or something? I mean, it's a pretty big accomplishment, in my opinion. So, well, I, I don't know. Just like I mean, I don't know. It's like something the school could put on or something to kind of celebrate that accomplishment. We can talk about anything. Anything, but yeah, we can. Next item on the agenda, which is public comment. Nobody signed up, so I don't think everybody's here. Next is 25, which uh, Christine Tobin and Kevin Caruso. Who wants to go first? Or you can come up together. Yeah, all of them. Yeah, they're teamwork. Any match. Just for you, everybody walked in, too, if you're that was my accident. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Love it. Hi, good evening. I'm Christine Tobin. I'm the dean of students. So this is Kevin Caruso, the assistant principal. I figured I would start out just to talk about an overview of the Dean's office and what we do on a daily basis and different people's roles. Um, so I'll start off with the administrative assistant. So she greets everyone. And we have lots of students coming in for, for a variety of issues. Some come in hot, some are upset, some just want to check in, some are waiting to meet with one of us. So she does a great job managing the variety of emotions that come into the office. Um, we have our attendance behavior monitor who monitors the attendance and makes sure that all students are aware of what the policy is. 
and that they're not violating the policy. So if a student's getting close to violating the policy, she's checking in with the student, she's checking in with the parent, she's building a relationship with that student to encourage them to come to school on a daily basis. Um, part of our responsibilities also are filing CRAs if the student is under 16 and they're not coming to school. So she represents us at Lowell Juvenile Court for that. I do the day-to-day -day discipline. I do a lot of check-ins with students. I build a lot of relationships because we want to be proactive instead of reactive. So we constantly have students in and out of the office. Sometimes if they're not in trouble, they miss seeing us and they want to come down and check in to let us know how they're doing. So we see a lot of that. Um, Kevin, he does the bullying and the Title IX investigation. So that's how we're separated. He does do the day-to-day -day stuff as well. But that's a you know, that's how we separate things, where he takes on those roles. Um, and then we have the in-house suspension teacher who uh, manages in-house suspension. So he reaches out to all the teachers when a student has in-house, uh, make sure that they can see their guidance counselor if they're seeing someone from 501, a school adjustment counselor. And he also is building relationships. So when he sees the students out in the community, he can be checking in with them as well. And he does a nice job with that. Um, so I think that's like the overview of our office. I'll turn it over to Kevin if you want to add anything to that. So, like um, Ms. Tobin said, I handle most of the all the bullying and Title IX investigations. Um, I also serve as the clubs and activities liaison, so working in conjunction with Ms. Cook and to, to help support um, all the clubs and activities that we have going on, um, including liaison to the, the athletic department. Um, as an administrator, I also handle any any student complaints against against staff, um, and try to mediate um, solutions and resolutions when when those come up. Um, you know, for the bullying and Title IX investigations, there's sort of the process of investigating and making the final determination. Um, but I also am uh, proactive, like Ms. Tobin, in terms of you know checking up on the cases even after they're closed. So just make checking in with the students, you know, both parties, providing, you know, additional support uh, for the students um, that were involved in those, um, those situations. Um, like Ms. Tobin said, it's a, it's a very busy office, but we all kind of <coughs> work together, um, you know, to support the students and families. Um, you know, I feel working here, it's been a great experience working in the Dean's office and working with the students and families here. Um, you know, they've, my experience has been that they've been very supportive of us. They know that Shoshin is a great place with a great opportunity. And with that, with that comes high expectations and the responsibility to kind of perform and, you know, meet behavioral expectations. So they've, they've been great to work with. So that's us. That's the dean's office. Do <laughs> you have any questions for them in particular? Nancy? What kind of... Um complaints are made against staff? So just, you know, if a student is, is struggling in the class, um, you know, and it, it's, there is sort of a, maybe a personality difference or the student feels like, you know, he's not given or she's not given a fair shake in the situation. Um, you know, I come in and I try to, to kind of mediate um, a solution. Sometimes, you know, in those cases, the you know, the, the student perspective isn't always accurate of what's happening and, you know, and just trying to get the student to, to kind of understand their role in, in what's going on is usually kind of how it ends up. Um, you know, and, and in those cases, I've also, you know, found the teachers are very amenable and understanding, you know, that we're here to support the students and sometimes, you know, what's right or what, what works for one student isn't always going to work for another. So they've always been... You know, in those type of situations, willing to work with me to, to try different strategies to help the student, you know, make better decisions and, and meet the expectations. So once you've done that, it's resolved. You don't get a repeat. Uh, ideally, you know, I mean, sometimes it's, it's more challenging than others. And, and that's, you know, on the day, you know, checking in and um, just kind of paying more attention to, you know, the an academic class or at a shop, just going into the class, you know, just constantly checking in with the teacher and the student to see how things are going. And over time, <coughs> things do get better. Yeah. Ron? Yes, thank you, Charlie. Um, Christine, I know this job is incredibly 
difficult. We're so glad to get Kevin on board to help you guys out, uh, taking care of a building this size. Um, you guys do a great job. Keep it under control. I just want to have you comment on, we see cell phones uh, all over the school districts. Uh, I know we're shutting them down here. I mean, so uh, has it been an issue? Or I know um, it's a necessary part of our society, but the kids, um, are they, uh, are you having any difficulties with this? Or how do you see it uh, as a problem? Or are we doing okay? I think we're doing okay. I think we became very strict overall as a whole in the building. And I think as a whole, it has improved. Students are always going to try to use their cell phones and they're always getting turned into the office, but they know the expectation, they know the consequence, and they're aware. They're aware yeah. of it. You know, know, they're aware of they're like the personal responsibility. So we don't really get much pushback from them. That's good. I know I know in a lot of shops they take them yeah. as they walk in the door. Yeah, so I, I'm glad of that because I know when we first started talking about cell phones, <laughs> teachers are turning them in every day to you. So, but, uh, so you seem the kids are respectful of the, the rules. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But they get to use them during lunchtime. lunchtime. Yeah. yeah. Right, so. Even in the hallways, I've been, I've been surprised, you know, I'm, I'm kind of short yeah. and I can kind of like <laughs> blend in sometimes you and, you know, I watch and they have them away that, you know, they're conditioned to, you know, keep them away and go to point A to point B. So. More more schools are doing it. So, yeah, thank you for your work. Appreciate it. How are you? Yeah, um, a lot of school districts were observing, and I think even heard sometimes anecdotally around here, that in the first say, year or so back from the pandemic, that both discipline problems and just mental health issues and challenges were particularly uh, challenging for everybody. Um, have you seen a real a change or evolution now that we're a couple of years back um, or? No, I think we're still on the rise from that. What I did forget to mention earlier when I was speaking was that something, a big change from last year to this year is that we've opened up the wall between the Dean's office and 501. So 501 houses the two school adjustment counselors and the school psychologists, because often we do share the same students. Right, so the students don't have to go, if they're in crisis, they don't have to go into the hall anymore and then go into 501. You know, we, we share the same space. And I guess a related question, do you observe very often that uh, the issues that you mentioned, particularly in the bullying area, are things that are, if not confined to the school building or something that's going on outside the school building or going out on, on social media and then it's being brought into the building? Uh, during the day? Yeah, a lot happens on social media and students will report on their behalf and on their friends' behalf if, there's, if they are feeling uncomfortable in the building. So even though like social media is going on at night, right, if it's making them feel uncomfortable in the building, we have to address it. So students are coming down and letting us know or, or their friends are. Thank you. Yeah, um, you mentioned um, in-house suspension. So my questions are: Do you do you still uh, you know use you know suspensions where a child would stay home? What's the difference? And if you are on in-house suspension, are you working on academic work while you're in in that uh, space? Yes. If you are in in-house suspension, we contact all of your teachers, or the in-house suspension teacher will contact all of the teachers and get work for the student to do. It won't be the It'll be almost the same. Like we try to replicate it as best as possible. Um, and if the student needs help from any of the teachers, we'll ask them to come down in their prep to assist. And, and is there a suspension at home still? There, there is. is a, there yeah. is not a school suspension. Um, we use that very infrequently, and that would only be if there was a safety concern to the building in most cases. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? Christine? Do you use the help of the BCBA? Often, yeah, yeah, and is that going well? We don't have a BCBA. Well, part time. Well, we had that. We had the, BC, the person yeah. we had resigned. So any BCBA we have in the building is contracted services only. So they're there. We only bring them in for kids that have that specifically spelled out in IEPs. We don't. We don't have an in-house BCBA. Okay. Good to know. Was it helpful during the time that we had the yeah, CBA? Yeah, yeah, she was great when she was with us. Yeah. <coughs>
this um maybe i've been around well earlier in my first term there was some challenges not from you guys but i'm saying outside factors do you feel that's kind of in the last couple of years as some like feel that it's, like, i guess just um i can tell you the meetings i attended nothing from you guys but it was more just I think they've I think they've died down. I haven't heard anything recently. Anybody else have any other questions? I want to thank both of you all. Thank you. 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 All right. Next on the agenda is the consent agenda. We've got approval of the bills, as well as the approval of the minutes. We have the bills to come back that has to do with Howard Greenspan, Fulton and McGay, and Martha. Uh, everybody's got a chance to. <coughs> hopefully, they're in your packet, as well as the minutes. If there's any questions on them, I'll. Take them out, not. We have a motion to. So moved. Right. Second. Oh, time out. Uh, All right. Motion, motion, motion. Go ahead. Second. Go ahead. Discussion. Go ahead. This uh, sort of a question uh, or re request uh, to tone uh, to the superintendent. Is there a point at which you think it would be appropriate to either report or comment on or? update the issue that Martha Kalina is involved with? Um, I would, but I really haven't heard any, re I don't have any correspondence from them. Okay. So um, that may be a, a, a topic for an upcoming meeting, but I just, I don't have any feedback from them at this point. All right. Thank you. I will, I will try to get something for the April meeting to make sure that there's an update on that. Thank you. Anybody else have any more comment or discussion on that? If not, all those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Next on the agenda is the business manager's report. Me already. So the first, if you want to grab a final budget book mm -hmm. on your way out, or you can keep the ones you have, it's up to you, but this is the approved version with um, some changes in it, if you'd like the most recent copy. So that's the first change. Um, I fixed the um, Patty's issue um, later on by town. I fixed that. There was maybe a couple small typos and I changed everything from saying proposed to approved. So this would be the final, final document. So that's the first thing going around. The second thing is favorite. your favorite. And I didn't do this at the last meeting. I'm glad I can make you so happy at your last meeting, Christine. Yes, you this is the um, budget sheet from Eunice as of this morning on where we stand financially. So any questions about that? You can email me or ask me now. Fixed costs uh, looks a little inflated. We have, still have about $4.8 in fixed costs, but that's mostly due to insurance and how we pay the insurance bill. It used to be a check. Now it's wired. So our comptroller, Mary, will book that as the year goes on. Um, other than that, I think we're in good standing. If you look at graphics and the negative, that's probably looks like the worst situation of all, but I take ownership on, on that one. I didn't put enough in their budget to cap to cover all their contract services. So that is the negative in there, but they also have a revolving. So there's a plan to remediate that. Everything else is a little bit the same thing with, um, you'll see... Is it English that has the 11,000? <laughs> so that's due to, again, contract services in some curriculum projects. Some of it was supposed to be taken from different contract services lines in multiple departments for curriculum writing projects. That will all flush out between grants and 
moving some money between departments that might have been charged to get English, but was also a history person was working on it. So that's mostly curriculum development. And then everything else is pretty minor. Academics falls into that same category. It's curriculum writing. We have that negative, but that will be grant, grant money will move into that to cover some of the curriculum writing. And also we may, we took money from academics that might've been having to take, take from science contract services line items. So we'll clean all those up in the next few weeks to see how they flesh out. Um, I'm just learning that finance is definitely a moving target. I've sat through, I've learned a lot about local politics by going to all these finance committee meetings and town meetings and everything, everyone does everything a little bit different and everybody has a different philosophy. So the philosophy of Shashin Tech on how we clear up these negatives is something we might want to talk about in the future. If you want to approve line item movements throughout the year, maybe every quarter or something along those lines, I think it'd be something we can talk about for next year. So the only um, line items that I moved at the beginning were <coughs> salaries. I covered all the salaries for where we were up in one, one department and maybe down in another. So those were fixed. Um, and an update on the audit, March 31st is the due date for our field work. I have up to right now, as of today, 70% of the site work completed. It's all been remote to date. So we're moving along with their timeline on Markham. So feel pretty confident. Hopefully we have that by the end of April and we can present at the May or June meeting. I'll have them come in. And then we've, I just said, we've gone out to some meetings. We've gone to Wilmington Finance, Tewksbury Finance. Burlington came to us, your two reps from Ways and Means. We met with them last mm -hmm. Friday. Um, Bedford, we went to the, their finance committee to talk about the stabilization fund. And last night we went to your town meeting for a couple it's hours. Right I now. did. I know I, we didn't even make it to our article, but I learned a lot about Bedford politics as well. <laughs> and um, we'll be heading to Bulwark next week for their finance committee meeting. So it's busy. Good busy. Any questions for me? Question. What's the status of the company overall the stabilization fund? They get pretty much approved and forward. Not the, they have to go to time town meeting. So they've been presented, but it has to be approved at town meeting. So I know in the, I know in the warrant for Bedford, it was going by the select warrant. Um, we haven't met with Bill Rick, but we met with Bill Rick of Selectmen, but they didn't indicate one way or the other what they were going to do. Um, we didn't meet with Wilmington Select Board, but my sense from their finance committee is that I don't I don't know that they were in support of our request. Tewksbury have been to the Select Board and the, and the finance committee. It, it seems like we have grown pretty solid ground with them. Um, and then, I mean, we met with the Education Subcommittee in Burlington, but there's still there's still ways and means, and we'll we'll see where it goes from there. So, I mean, the three three of them, I think we get a pretty good sense on as as somewhat positive. Um, we got one that uh, I don't know if it's going to be supported, and then one we're still kind of trying to figure out. You only need what four out of five. We need four out of five. Yep. Okay. So you could make a case like last year if there was surplus from END, you could potentially put that as a funding as like all the means all the town meeting approvals by that time. Potentially. And we'd have to do it as a budget amendment at that point. But yeah, we could. Yep. Thank you. Anybody else have anything? Okay. What? Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Next was great job. Superintendent report. All right. So uh, there's a few things in here that are going to be repeats. Um, seems that Sarah seems to do a very good job of keeping us updated on what's going on. Uh, I'm happy to report that our enrollment number for March is the same as it was in February. We have not lost any students. Um, I would like to see a little bit higher than that, but uh, again, I, I'm happy that um, we haven't seen we haven't seen any dips like we have the past few months. So we're holding steady at 1282 right now, um, which is also where we were in February. Uh, Co-op update, um, 232 students, 207 employers. Um, students have worked 99,381 hours to date, um, which is pretty impressive. And uh, even more impressive, I think, to me is um, $1,628,346 in earnings. So this is, this is class of 2024. 20, this is our graduating seniors. 
Um, in a week or so, our juniors will also become eligible. It will, it will start the final quarter of the year. Um, so moving forward, I will have class of 24 and class of 25 updates. So I know there's a lot of students that are looking forward to that, that are anticipating that date and, you know, want to want to get out and start working as well. So um, those numbers should grow. Uh, again, breakdown by community. We have, we have five Bedford students, 100 Dolreca students, 17 Burlington students, 60 Tuxbury students, and 50 Wilmington students. Uh, the 232 out of our 326 seniors, so about 71%. Um, I think we were a little higher as a percentage last year. I think we were up to close to 75 by the end of the school year. Um, but I, those are still super solid numbers. Um, I have not been able to find any database or collection source about uh, numbers and number of students participating and hours worked and everything like that across vocational schools. But I would venture to guess that if we're not at the top, we're, we're in the top three in the state as far as number of students out, um, students working, percentage of students working, all of those things. Um, awards update. So as Sarah had shared with us, um, Danica represented Shawshin. Not only did she win the award, she was also on a national panel um, that was discussing, um, you know, reskilling and upskilling um, worker, the workforce. I, I know I, I've talked to Danica when she came back from the trip. She was she was very excited. She made a lot of connections with um, other schools and other people from across the country, um, and, and to be able to talk to them about how CTE is done in their states and, and how those different things are run. Um, she said that it was it was a really positive experience. Um, so it was it was more than just her going out to accept the award. She also had the opportunity to represent the school, um, and there was a. Um, a conference publication that went out that also had some information about Shawshin. So uh, as, as a school and a district, we also had got some, some recognition and, and some publicity as, as part of um, her winning this award. Uh, Sarah talked about National Honor Society. Um, the induction ceremony was on the 21st. So um, I, will, I will send the presentation to people after the meeting. I won't, I won't bother read through the list of students, um, but you can see um, we have a we have a very good representation of students that, that were inducted. Um, this is class of 24 and 25, so our, our, senior, our juniors and seniors. Um, like I said, that was last Thursday, yes? Um, I'd love to see, like, who from Burlington is on that list, so I can yeah. write a letter and say, great job. Let me... Let me follow up on that. Um, yeah, and I will. I so again, thank you for the suggestion. I will try to get that breakdown for everybody in my community, so everybody knows who their who their kids are. And okay, thank you. I had not thought of that, Chris. Um, Sarah talked about skills. Um, we had a nice ceremony on Monday. We get all the kids together uh, and did a nice presentation to all our winners. Twenty-one gold medals, twenty-seven silvers, eighteen bronze, total of sixty-six medals. 18 of those students were juniors, 43, uh, excuse me, 18 of those students were seniors, 43 were juniors and five sophomores. And out of that pack, we have 56 kids um, that have qualified to go to the state conference. And that, that doesn't include any of the leadership conference, uh, leadership contests that our, our kids will participate in. So we should have probably close to 70 kids um, that will go to the state conference to represent us. Again, I have the list. Um, I will not. I will not read out all of the names, but I will send the list out to the committee members as well. This one does include uh, the town and the community on it, so you should be able to go down through and see which students um, fall, fall from your own community. Um, the one shout out I will I will give. Um, we have a two-time defending national champion um, who has won gold again. Um, at the district level. So stage one of his, his three-peat um, is in the books. <laughs> and um, I know he's already talking about going to the state conference and, and he's looking forward to uh, doing just as well as he has there the last few years. So good, good luck to him as well. Uh, staffing changes. I just wanted to kind of give people an update where we stand right now. Um, we, uh, we just hired a guidance count. We had a mid-year resignation of a guidance counselor. Um, we were lucky to find somebody mid-year uh, who I think is a, is a solid candidate and will fit well down there. 
So that position was posted and replaced. Um, we have uh, five instructional retirements this year, one in metal fab, one in drafting, one in medical assisting, one in cosmetology, and one in culinary arts. Um, we have a resignation that's already been submitted effective the end of the school year in HVAC. And we have uh, a resignation from the nurse's office, uh, a retirement from the nurse's office, excuse me, not resignation, a retirement from ed tech, ed tech and a retirement from child care. So at this point, the guidance, the new guidance counselor has been hired is supposed to start April 8th. So um, he is he is well on his way to joining us. Um, we have signed a candidate for the, the to start in the fall for metal fab. We were able to hire somebody for that position. Um, we signed a candidate this I, I signed a candidate this afternoon for the medical assisting position who will start in the fall. Um, and we have an interview with an HVAC candidate tomorrow that we hope to sign. Um, Mr. Norkowitz, I know, has, has interviewed a couple of people for the drafting position. Um, and I believe it's either this week or next week he had planned to start interviews for both, both cosmetology and culinary arts. I will say we've gotten 20 plus applications for both the cosmetology and the culinary arts positions. So we've, we've had a, a good deal of interest in those two positions. So um, hopefully that leads to a, a strong pool of candidates that we can we can pull from. Um, and again, um, you know, the, the, the other three, the, the nurse's office, uh, ed tech and child care, we will be posting um, and starting to meet people those positions. Those will all be effective um, the start of school in the fall. So, Good question. Yeah. so all that list the outside office, the guidance council, everybody's leaving at 25 at the end of the year. Just one is resigned, all the rest are retirees. Did I read that right? No, so the, the, gu the guidance counselor was a resignation. Right. Um, Metal fab drafting, medical assistant, cosmetology, culinary were retirees. HVAC was a resignation, and then the rest were retirees. So, so H HVAC and the guidance counselor. They got they got no the guidance counselor. Right. So, uh, do you do like exit interviews? I do. Yep. No, no. Yeah, I'm trying to listen. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. say I think it's old. Oh, no. I can't speak to the guidance council, but how about these ratios? People want to stay in. Yeah. We're only going to get a few for whatever reason. We won't ask here if it's moving purposes family or they just don't like it yet. whatever it is yeah no i have i have like five or six kind of standard questions that i ask everybody that you know as they're leaving and, and again i i i've listened you know I, I do want the feedback you know i, I want to know other things that we can do as a district to kind of change or improve or you know like you said what was it is it is it closer to home is it you know is it is it something that you know is it we have some people that have left to go back to or go to place that they might have gone to school, you know, or an alumni or, you know, whatever it is. So um, we, we have some, we have some various reasons that and some people, um, and some, well, pe know. some people get into education and realize that it's not, it's not what they thought it was and it's not a good fit for them. And, and you know, kudos to them for recognizing that and saying, you know what, um, I'm going to work out, I'm going to work out the rest of the school <clears> year, but um, at the end of the school year, I'm done because this, this isn't really a good fit for me. So. Yeah, I'm glad you're proactive on this to get these positions filled because I know the longer you wait, it becomes harder and harder and harder. I know some of the vocational areas, I'm so glad to see 20 plus candidates in some of these areas that makes difficult decisions, but that's good decisions. In other areas, I know you were saying we we're hoping to get more HVAC candidates. So, yeah, and the people get here, I realize this business is maybe not what they want to do, but yeah, I know. So, Keep up the good work, I guess, and try to fill these jobs. Thank you. Um, just an update on advanced coursework. And, and um, we here currently do this as concurrent enrollment. And I'm, I'm sure you've you've either heard that term or you may have seen it in the program of studies. And I know Danica talked a little bit about this when she was here. Um, we've been partnering with a group called the Education Alliance, um, which is, a, is an outside um, group, consultant, whatever term you want to use with them. Um, they've put together kind of a partnership um, that includes us, it includes Northeast Metro Tech, it includes Greater Lawrence, um, it includes uh, Act in Boxborough, um, and there's another community in there I'm forgetting, but um, essentially they're trying to, to leverage the resources of all of those communities to come together um, to pool resources to be able to pay for courses or pay for instructors so that we can, we can kind of share the costs essentially is the way it works. Um, 
I originally got involved with them um, around grant fund. They are, they are a big mover and shaker uh, with the early college grant piece that the Department of Ed has kind of prioritized the past year and a half or two years. So um, we are working, we'll continue to work with them through the spring on potential opportunities for grant funding, uh, either to pay for instructors to run current concurrent enrollment classes for our students or to offset the cost of our kids to go to one of their institutions. Um, what does this look like? This is a partnership with Middlesex Community College, which we already had. Um, the early college piece kind of expands on that and is, is really um, supposed to be more of a linear pathway for kids. Like if a kid wants to go into health careers or health sciences, you know, we would offer some courses here that would kind of lead them towards that track um, at Middlesex. We've talked, Middlesex has been here. We, we had their president over here. We had a nice meeting with them and, and a lot of the deans. Um, we've talked about dental. We've talked about drafting. We talked about some programs that they have and that we have in trying to partner with them and, and mirror some of our offerings so that our students get credit for, for both institutions. Um, we've also um, brokered a nice partnership with UMass Lowell's College of Engineering. Um, and we are looking at, we, we hope to potentially start to run a course on our campus in the fall that's taught by UMass Lowell engineering staff. That's, that's our goal. So um, hopefully that plays out the way we intended to. And then the other, the other group that we've really been um, partnering with and working with is Boston Architectural College. Um, there's, there's some more connections there to some of our, our traditional uh, trade areas, our trade programs. Um, I think that one's going to be a little bit, a little bit, a little bit more of a heavy lift for us than the other two. Um, but again, we're we're open to to ideas. The one thing that um, some of these conversations and partnerships have led to that I'm really excited about, and I know Mr. Norquartz is really excited excited about. UMass Lowell runs um, this EPIC summer program, which is the Engineering Possibilities Immersive Camp. I know some of our, some of our Burlington residents were interested in attending last year and uh, we didn't have seats for them. We are working with UMass Lowell to have a week long session just for Shashin students, um, which involves three days on the UMass Lowell campus working with the engineering staff. And then what they do is they come back here on that fourth day on that Thursday and do almost, um, I've been calling it a science fair. That's, that's probably not the exact description of it, but the kids would be able to present what they learned and what they designed and what their project was to their peers, but also have you know family and friends and parents if they want to come in and, and see what the kids have been working on. Um, so we are super excited about that. Um, there's still some moving pieces around transportation and, and how we're going to get kids from point A to point B, but um, we are looking at probably uh, one of the last two weeks of July. Um, and our intent is not just to offer that to our engineering students, but to open that up to students across the building. So if we had a kid in electrical that, you know, has, has gone through the program and has realized, you know what, I think I want to be an electrical engineer. Um, or we have a kid in HVAC or automotive that, you know, is like, I, you know, I'm interested in mechanical engineering. I've, I've learned some of these things. I want to go in a different direction. So. Um, yes, just, just a quick question yeah. uh, for the summer program. Is there a cost associated with that uh, if a student wanted to enroll? We haven't worked that out yet. There, there is a cost to run the program. We're trying to either through grants um, or, or other other resources pay for that. Um, I don't know if we're going to be able to do that or not. We haven't got we haven't got to that level of detail yet. Thanks. I don't know what Boston Architectural College is. Neither did I until I looked it up. Oh, thank you. Um, it is, um, I'm going to say it, it's it's kind of similar to Wentworth. Um, is it in Boston? It yeah, is, and it, it's it's a, it's a private college, uh, really oriented around architecture, oh, yeah. interior design, four-year, yeah, landscape design. Uh, it's it's more of kind of the, the creative, artistic City aspect of, yeah, yeah, yeah. So is that new? No, they've been around for about 150 years. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Yeah. I've never heard of it either. Oh, my ready. goodness. Yeah. I had to look it up. I never heard of it. Is it very small? It appears to be. Um, I, I don't I don't think it has a very large campus. 150 footprint. years? I've had a few years to learn that. Do you know what section of Boston it's located? I do not. I think it's it in the back. Back Bay yeah, area, not too far from Newbury Street, if I recall. 
So again, we, we are, in, in, through Jim Carlson and the guidance office, we're also trying to put together some campus visits for students in the spring so that, you know, they can go out to Middlesex and they can, they can meet their faculty and see what their facility looks like. They can go to UMass Lowell's College of Engineering. Um, we've talked about sending them to Boston Architectural College. We'll, we'll have to see if we can pull that one together too. Um, but yeah, we're, we're, again, we're, we're, tr we're really trying to expand this and, and put opportunities out there. Um, you know, I mean, we have, we, we have kids that go out to work and, and, you know, they do great things and we encourage that. And that's a big portion of what we do. We all have, we also have kids that want to go on to school, whether it's connected to, you know, their co-op job and, and what they, what they did here, if it's, if it's an offshoot from something they learned with us. And I think the more opportunities we give kids and the more supportive we, we, the more on ramps that we create for them when they leave us, the better off everybody's going to be. So this is, this is part of that work and uh, we'll continue with it as we go forward. Don't make them write the T for the Boston Architectural College. Don't make them write the T. No, okay. Boston Architectural <laughs> College is on Newberry Street. And undergraduate enrollment in 2021-22 was 264. Yeah, that is so tiny. Light, oh, Charlie. Make sure you have a bus off. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll, no, we'll send them. We'll send them now. <laughs> um, schedule update. Um, we are currently working on a model. Uh, and I think I shared this with, with people here uh, a month or so ago. Um, we do, I do have one of our one of our <laughs> staff members um, actually creating a whole mock schedule based on the, the, the proposed changes that we want to make. So last year we had a committee, we had a whole committee that met on this multiple times. Um, we kind of came up with a proposed solution. We're kind of working through the logistics of you know, can we staff it with the number of people that we have in the building? Can we offer enough sections so that every, you know, that every kid is scheduled the number of periods during the day that they need? Um, so we're working through all of that. I am targeting, uh, and I will, I guess I'll, I'll throw this question out to our chair of the curriculum subcommittee now. Um, is it possible for us to maybe meet before the April school committee meeting? And we can't meet during vacations, so that locks us into the first couple of weeks of April, right? Well, I mean, I would. Do you want to do it? I mean, I would rather do it before the school committee meeting. It's just a week. Same day, a Tuesday after the week. vacation. It's Tuesday after so vacation. Just do it right before the like school week, committee. Like a six oh. o'clock. Yeah. Like an hour before. Five thirty or whatever. Yeah. Whatever. Um, yeah. You want to go? Sure. Anyways, we we can we can coordinate that. But no, I was no. thinking about trying to do it before April vacation, but that's a little tight. And I don't know that we're going to have all the information back, and I won't have an opportunity to pull a scheduling committee back together. Well, then you'll have to wait and see what you get. And then we'll set yeah. the date. Okay. That's. I mean, if you want to do it the day of the school committee meeting, that's fine. So I will. I will reach out, and hopefully, we can put something together for that. Schedule question: Did we vote the last day of school for this year? Next month. Yeah. Next meeting. Oh. Next meeting. Thank you. Will that same person ask me? <laughs> Just in case. Yeah, we're getting questions. No she said no, no, no day. <laughs> She's asking all of us. Look at my own. She asked the entire right yeah. side. Masonry <laughs> project update. I, I don't think I've really kind of shared this timeline, so I did I did want to throw this out there and put this together. Just, uh, I, again, I know this is, we keep talking about it, and it doesn't seem like um, we've made a lot of progress. But um, last August, we did hire... Um, Lagrassi, Yanowitz, and Fell um, to do um, both bidding and construction management. They are a company, they're actually the same company that managed our um, pool wall repair project, and we we've done business with them numerous times in the past. Um, Ken is Ken is here a lot on a regular basis to help us with with maintenance related things and, and other projects. Um, September through December of last year was engineering and design. Uh, we worked with Ken and his team. The, you know, they came out, they took field measurements, they shot grade, they did all kinds of things out there. Um, came back with some plans for us and some suggestions. The first round of bidding went out in January, um, which included uh, a, a pretty wide scope to the project. Um, came back way over budget. Um, and then we looked at, there was some things in there around um, the relocation of the sewer line and some other stuff that was really more more of want than a need. Um, so we changed, again, we changed the scope of the, the bid, the bid for the project It went back out in February. Um, we did get two bids. Um, unfortunately, one of them did not contain all of the bid documentation. Um, so they, therefore we came in again, way over bid again. Um, 
we changed the timeline on the project um, and, and there's actually an update on the next slide. Um, we met with the grant funder. Um, they extended the grant to December 31st of 2024. So they gave us through the rest of the calendar year to finish the project. Um, so with that in mind, um, we lengthened the timeline that we had put in the bid uh, to extend this out over the summer and potentially have the building up and ready for potential occupancy at the start of the school year. Um, and bids will be open it's next week, yes. next Thursday. Yep. Um, so so the April 4th, the last the April 4th, slide, yeah. April yeah. 4th on it? So the April 4th date, um, we are I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic um, that we will have a bid and all the paperwork will oh, be submitted and it will be on budget and we can get started on that. Um, one positive, uh, and, and our grants manager and myself met with um, the, the, the group that had funded this, um, even in the course of our meeting to talk to them about, you know, the grant time <coughs> and what their, what their uh, comfort level with, with it was, they were asking us to prepare a list of potential future projects that we could, we could go back to them with and have them fund. So, um, I think we're we're on we're on pretty solid ground with them. Um, they seem like they have um, they have money to spend, um, and they are they are looking for opportunities to partner with schools. And um, their biggest takeaway from this is is they want they want our feedback about um, what works and what doesn't work in the public school sector, so that as they move forward, they can change and modify their grant program to be more reflective and more supportive of um, schools. So would they have guinea pig? No, there's there's other schools that have got it, but this is this is relative. So this group has been giving out grants to um, agencies and, and, and public groups and stuff like that for years. Um, it's only been about the last three or four years that they've started to partner with schools. So this is this is still kind of new to them. Um, so I think they're still kind of, they're kind of figuring it out as they go. Um, but it's been a good partnership. Um, we're looking forward to, you know, potentially working with them on something else. I mean, you know, they, they you know, they're looking at three, four, five hundred thousand dollar grants. So um, it's nothing to sneeze at. Just need you to remind me, what are we doing with the masonry project? What, what are we actually building? It's this is the expansion of the. This is the 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 the, the building beside the building. Yeah. To okay. expand the space within the shop there. This is this is that that metal building. Bumping out the wall. And where the storage area is now. Yeah, well, the storage area has been demolished. Well, yeah, yeah, where it yeah, was. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Who's this group doing? I'm sorry. Which group? This group, this grant group. What they and this is an anonymous funder. Okay. Thank I you. could tell. Uh, <laughs> I will gladly tell you well, afterwards, but um, okay. that, that, that they, asked, the they asked if we don't disclose. No, I thought them. I missed the name. Thanks, Storm. Yeah. They got money. We want it. Yeah. Let's go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sounds like they have more money that they want to give us. Yeah. Come on. Okay, we'll take that. It's a lot of money. Let's get in line. So if everything goes smoothly on on April 4th or whatever. Yeah. You, you feel comfortable that they'll be able to get it done before you open it up to school year? Yeah, I, I do. Yep. Yep. All right. Well, that was it. I think we've answered questions as we went. So yeah. Anybody next. else got any other questions? Else, Christine. I do. I mean, you know, going forward, it, it doesn't affect me, but um, I would really let enjoy. I would have really enjoyed to have your. Uh, presentations that you do to be able to take home because there's been like I take pictures of it with my phone and then do stuff with it so I think it would probably be great if you could share your presentations with us in a paper you wanna, form uh, so, oh so you want you want to print it yeah okay okay yeah um, you know, I'm sure he's working on it right up to total meeting, so may not be able to get in advance. But yeah, printed that, yeah. Yeah, and even bad. after a meeting, just because I feel funny it's taking pictures, remember, like, but I want to. A lot of with the student, I'm like, I don't know what those numbers again. I, I yeah, can't really understand. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Should we from asking you shall receive? Say it with it. Karen, send an email or something. Can we send an email? I mean, I can I can email the people after. Well, I'm just saying, if she was working with the figures and stuff. You set this out electronically tomorrow to all of us. We'll do it. Yeah, yeah, because, because I, I take notes, but I like to just kind of digest it. I think everybody's different. Yeah. I know Cheryl likes to. 
Yeah, read the yeah. report. <laughs> like, I get it. The numbers. <laughs> All right. Um, just following up on that, is it okay to share portions of your slides on social media? I mean, seeing as it's a public meeting, it's public knowledge anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially like Danica. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There was there was some there was some of Danica's stuff on social media. Yeah, right. Good. Yeah. And the for the also twenty four more ones. Thank you. Thank you. Next on the agenda is the subcommittee reports. We'll start out with the negotiation committee. Uh, well, both of those, both of mine, will be dealt with in executive session. So the will update is the ferret. Next is the facility capital planning subcommittee. Fine. Right. The committee met uh, just before this meeting tonight to review and discuss the uh, next version of proposed SLI for submission to the MSBA next month. Um, the text will remain uh, in the same form as what everybody received as part of their packet tonight. The facilities committee voted unanimously to endorse the submission of the SLI prepared by the superintendent. Um, and so we'll take a vote on that later tonight. That's it. Anybody got anything on the old business that they'd like to bring up, Nancy? Sorry. Oh, Mr. Carter, um, I just have a question on the SOI. I was skimming it, and it said something about um, the lockers, one of the the sections is overcrowdedness, one, right? And That's you have re referred to the um, lockers not having ADA accessibility. How do we do that? How do we work it out? And how many kids have ADA? Do we have that problem? Do we have an ADA issue? I don't have an answer to that off the top of my head. I'm, I'm sure I, mean, I never saw ADA in any of our situations, and I don't know if it's I'm physical sure disability or I'm mental sure disability. students with mobility. Right. Some of them may be temporary. I mean, we do have to have kids that have had knee surgery or broken legs or oh, um, on crutches or something. But I mean, I know, and we, we talked about this in the subcommittee meeting. One of the big ones is the ramps. The ramps in this building are, are significantly steeper than they're supposed to be according to ADA, um, which again, that, that's not anything we're going to fix overnight. Um, so. Okay, so it's not an issue we have to worry about, about complying with ADA. Rebuild, I mean, it's some, yeah, yeah, right, yeah, but I mean, currently nobody has made an issue. No, no, no nobody's made no an issue. Students. And we, but we want to be, you know, if a student right. applies next, you know, if a student who just there. got in is permanently wheelchair bound, we don't want it to be that, you know, they risk going through the window every time they go down to the cafeteria, the, the no, gym. Yeah, they can't stop. Well, that's another thing. What happens if we do have a kid in, in a wheelchair? How do they do the shops? We have to make accommodations based on have we had to? I mean, that would be again. Problem. I don't. I don't know of any off the top of my oh, head, but I mean, that's, that's, that's that. this whole issue just popped up in my head, and I couldn't picture what we would do if that were an issue. I mean, going back to my time as a shop teacher, I actually had a student in my shop that was in a wheelchair permanently, permanently in a wheelchair. Yeah. And what shop? I taught metal fab. Oh. So that was those were some interesting accommodations. Yeah. For so they have nothing to do with admissions. I mean, obviously, we can't use that as a no. No. discrimination. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Can I ask a question about this? Only because someone asked me. So is there much different from the SOI than before? Not a lot. I think it, it has some updated materials related to the, the uh, admissions number and how okay. the demand there's right. some additional information about specific building things that have run afoul in the last year including uh, there's some uh, references to the pool project that had to be done there's a few other examples i wouldn't say it's not know, an extensive it's not an extensive not rewriting of what we've done um and we did have some discussions you know about almost anticipating what we have to keep doing every year to maybe make it more uh, traumatic. <laughs> um, 
and you know what it's going to take. We know we're not the only um, vocational school that feels somewhat ignored at, at this point, but um, because the issues are common. But um, and I think it also uh, one of the things that did come up in the discussion earlier was it does emphasize the things that have been done, that the place has, has not been ignored. There have been these updates to the roof. There have been some updates to some other areas in 2003. And then there was the uh, reconfiguration, you know, switching the diesel area to the health area. Things have been done. But I, I think there's enough examples offered of just basic structural things that are always a, a wing and a prayer that they something could go wrong but i think there's some reference to the hvac units on the roof but yeah it's 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 an, an edited, edited version as opposed to a complete revamp but it does have like i think what struck me is the third time out is like oh yeah there's like 150 kids and we don't have spaces for that are, want to come here Nancy? Um, there was reference to not uh, not the reason we don't have uh, modular add-ons. We, we could use it for academic, but we can't use it, obviously, for shop. But why don't we use it for academic? Enlarge that area. Well, I'll let the superintendent and uh, anyone else who wants to speak to that, but I, I think the sense is you really you couldn't like just take the academic rooms away and add on to the shops. You couldn't just add that space. Now, if there is a way to do that. I mean, I don't know. Obviously, you've considered it. I just didn't understand it. I mean, one of the things is you, you still need space to put the modulars. So yeah. that means do we take parking lot space? Do we, you know, I mean, and that has impacts on staff parking, student parking, bus routes, all of those Are other things. Are in parking? It depends. I mean, you put you put six modules in that parking lot. We're talking 150, 175 parking spaces that can make a big difference. Um, the other piece that is always a little scary to me is the security. If you have six modular classrooms in the parking lot, our kids coming and going out one of our entrances between classes. Do they have to go out to the building for third period? Come back here for fourth period? who's monitoring, who's coming and going, who monitors those entrances. Um, and then, you know, to Brian's point, um, if we move academic classes out of three, four, five classrooms, there's still a considerable amount of remodeling that needs to be done to create a usable shop space out of that. And, you know, and again, all of those things cost money. Um, <coughs> so, I mean, there's- We're talking money again. Oh, yeah. Money. yeah. yeah. Thank you. Um, this actually doesn't have to do with um, the SOI that sparked it. I know, at this for Tony, I know um, acceptance letters have gone out. At what point do those students have to let you know so that you can start accepting off the wait list? April 1st. And what we are doing is as kids um, decline, it, once a week we are updating that the standings. So again, if, if we have 15 or 20 kids this week that notify us, you know, I changed my mind, I am not accepting this. What we do is then we go back to that priority wait list and then updated letters will be issued to the kids off the priority wait list to say, we, you know, they won't say we have 20 more spots, but they'll say, you know, we've, you, you've now been accepted, um, you know, plan on coming to this, this event and testing and blah, blah, blah. So we're, on a weekly basis, we are sending updates to families as well. And at this point, the only students on any wait list are eighth graders. There's no ninth or tenth graders on the wait list. Thank you. Welcome. How long do the, um, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. How long um, do you have as a, uh, a priority wait listed person to accept or reject that offer of acceptance? That, so that's April 1st. Well, that's the people who already did, correct? So that, that, how oh, long I'm sorry. Can, if you send a letter to a waitlist student, how long do they have before they, they have, have to, to they would have till April 15th. Yeah. So they have two yeah. weeks and then, yeah. 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 And then April, April 15th kind of opens the floodgates to right. then the ranked order based on. But the priority list 
kids, they also have to let you know to take the placement test. Right. They have to sign up for those. Right. And, and I believe we've had some priority waitlist kids that have also said, you know what, I've changed my mind. I'm good. I, you know, I'm not interested in coming. So. Um, okay. Well, no, just for either list, you know, the original acceptance of priority, say there, you know, there was a family emergency and they missed that deadline and it's April 3rd. Did they lose their opportunity? Okay. We we have a little flexibility. In yeah. This is one of the I was assume this is a legitimate a reason. Yeah. Little yeah. reason and not just because. Yeah. I would hope you would give them enough opportunity. Anybody else? Kent? Yeah, I'll just back up with Brian said on this SOI. Like I think like <clears throat> if this year gets rejected, I mean like you said at the meeting, I think it's like I mean like Burlington's rejected like probably dozen times or ten times they could find a side to fund themselves. Not that we're gonna do that, but I think to Brian's point, like I think if we get rejected this year, we need to continue to look at ways to whether that's you know, I don't know if that's hiring a full consultant, but maybe there's like other maybe cheaper way, not cheap, but you know what I mean, other alternatives we could learn in other schools, whether it's an engineering or some construct like HVAC report that gets included. But like I said in the meeting, we're having that's my biggest concern with school, like this size. If you have like HVAC units that are like, you know, like I said, they're probably older than me. You're having manufactured parts and companies that have been in business for probably longer than you've been on this planet. Um, <laughs> my point being is, is like that shouldn't be. I, my hope is like that if we do get accepted in, this is types of stuff that will, you know, and the, you know, the school will be able to, you know, not worry about modular units and all that crap. You know what I mean? It's just like you'll be able to you know have like programs that existing ones and you'll be able to attract you know new programs you're able to so i think that kind of limits the the school so i hope that the state will recognize that and i think that's we continue to find ways like whether it's reports or hammering on you know state representatives or whoever it is or partnering whatever we need to do and i think i think you've done a good job with that but i think it's like i think it's that's going to be a really important priority it's still over a 60 year old school and, you know, they've done a really good job maintaining it, but I think it's that's got to be, you know, the three to five year projects can only take it so far. I think that's you can't you know, eventually you got to turn over. So I think that's you got to. Not saying it's your fault or yours. I'm just saying that needs to be a continue because just as the as the building ages, it's just going to make your guys' jobs so more. It's like round round peg in a square hole. So I think I think the proposal is accurate. <clears throat> Yeah, I agree. Like you were trying the same thing that yeah. you know, if we get a reject all right, three times we gotta do something different, no question. Yeah. If we fail again this time. Hopefully we will. I thought what you guys would look good. Thank you. Anybody else for the one? Right, old business. Anybody want to bring anything up on the old business? If not, we're going to new business. The first thing is the vote of the 24-25 school calendar. I discuss with one. So moved. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Okay, next is the vote for the school committee meeting dates. So moved. Second. Who is the second to vote? In the packet. Any mm -hmm. discussion? Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Yes. Guys, it's a little faster than I can read. <laughs> <laughs> Next is the vote on the statement of interest, which everybody got. We had already discussed somewhat. Do you want to? Um, yes. Oh, yes. I have, this I have. one has the official, the one we have to read it. <laughs> yeah, you want to read it? Yeah. All right, Brian. I was going to give the chair, I'll let you. Yes. yes. There you go. Pass it on to him. Let me find it's the chair. one. Which, oh, you have it. Oh, you have it in large print. I saw it. <laughs> I Thank you. I would like to move that it be resolved, having convened at an open meeting on March the 26th, 2024, prior to the SOI submission closing date, the school committee of Shawshian Valley Regional Technical School District, in accordance with charter, bylaws, and ordinances, has voted to authorize the superintendent director, Smith, Massachusetts School Building Authority, the statement of interest form 
dated March 26, 2024 for the Sharshine Valley Regional Vocational School Deck located at 100 Cook Street, Billerica, Massachusetts, which describes and explains the following deficiencies in the priority categories um, for which an application may be submitted to the Massachusetts School Building uh, Authority in the future. We are priority two, elimination of severe crowding. And priority five, replacement, renovation, and modernization of school facility systems such as roofs, windows, boilers, heating, and ventilation systems to increase school and <clears throat> increase energy conservation and decrease energy related costs in a school facility. And priority number seven, replacement of our or addition to obsolete buildings in order to provide for a full range of programs consistent with state and approved local requirements and hereby further specifically acknowledges that by submitting this statement of interest form, the Mass School Building Authority in no way guarantees, we certainly know that, <laughs> the acceptance or approval of an application, the awarding of a grant or any other funding commitment from the Massachusetts School Building Authority or commits the Shawshank Valley Regional Vocational School District to filing an application for funding with the Massachusetts School Building Authority. That is the motion. The motion. We have a second. second. Any further discussion on that? None? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Yes. Next is the vote for Section J of the Paul Plea Meeting. Oh, I think we're good. Is this the first time? Can I ask a few questions? Or? Yeah, well, you go ahead. <laughs> I'll try and answer. Okay. Actually, right from the very beginning, there was a um, thing in the original policies. Um, just talking about um, schools and uh, priorities, children, and you took that one out. And I kind of liked it, or you could have made it shorter, but I just liked the statement that said, you know, the priority of a school. Well, it, was, it was the very first one, but I don't... J.A. Student Policy Goals. Yeah. Yeah. For some reason, I don't have it here. Oh, yeah. Isn't that something that was mentioned elsewhere in the um, policy? Uh, there, there's that, and then um, broad statements as well. I just like the it's, first sentence. I just thought it. It's not really a policy. It's a comment. I know. Um, <laughs> I know that, but so I just. Like, <laughs> no, no, just no. Saying. I'm saying that was the reason. Right. Not that. I know. <laughs> Um, I mean, I thought it was a little long-winded after the first sentence, but I just oh, I don't <coughs> like that sentence. All right. But then I want to go back and go to uh, Equal Education Opportunities. JB. JB. Mm -hmm. All right. I, I like that, but then I really do not like Educational Equity, JBB. Because I want someone to explain to me, I mean, I understand it, but I want someone else to explain the word equity instead of equality, and then the disaggregated data instead of aggregate data. Um, when considering JBV, mm -hmm. we, took, we took the MA. And I know the you did. AFC version I know because you the MASC their version. attorneys said that those were the better words to use. Because that is the woke words to use. Yeah, but I'm just saying we want we want equality. Equity is a fairness and and yes, we want fairness in all schools, but actually the equal educational opportunities says it in the first thing, in recognition of diversified characteristics and needs of our students and with a keen desire to be responsive to them, the school committee will make every effort to protect the dignity of the students as individuals. And, and then it talks about, well, so I don't know, maybe a sentence from this into this, because unfortunately, 
This is like CIT language, which in reality, it doesn't give everybody equal language. Or, well, maybe you give equal language, but everyone needs to achieve at what their, how they can achieve to the utmost. And that's equality. This equity sometimes brings kids down, sometimes brings the higher kids down because you're teaching to a certain group of kids instead of teaching all of them. I, I really hate the word equity. I think it should always be equality. But that's my opinion, so I would vote against that. Mm -hmm. I really need a definition of equality and equity. Uh, it's very subjective, and I feel that I, that's always been an issue for me too. Right. And uh, I, I don't, I don't really understand the differences. To me, equality is part of equity. But or equity sure. is part of equality. I'm not really. sure that that's true. I don't know. <laughs> Tony, can you help clarify those terms? Uh, I, I can give you. I, I actually can give you the definition. And they have the definition oh, okay. within the. In education. No, no, how about just a definition? Oh, you're talking about in terms of education. Education. The term equity refers to the principle of fairness. While it is often used interchangeably with the related principle equality, equity encompasses a wide variety of educational models, programs, and strategies that may be considered fair, but not necessarily equal. It has been said that equity is the process, equality is the outcome. Yeah, say it again. Equity is the process. process. Equality is the outcome. Given that equity, what is fair and just, may not in the process of educating students reflect strict equality. What is applied, allocated, or distributed equal. So. Could you? Could you identify the, the source of what you're reading? I, I took it off the internet. <laughs> I said, give me this. And I'm sorry, I just copied because it had five pages of more so it's a dictionary definition, but you yeah. don't know what dictionary. Did you explain your... That's not a dictionary. No, it was, um, it was dictionary. about education, inequity, and equality. Yeah. And could you explain the reference to CRT? That was my reference because I, I had someone read something and they said, oh, that sounds like CRT. Yeah, <laughs> but that's sure. another vague term. Well, well, it is. I think uh, it's an incredibly misused term and I yeah. think completely inappropriate. And I and think, well, I think are. equity is yeah. a misused term. Okay. I, I can see misused. the concept of the, of the, the inequity between <laughs> equity and equality. I, I don't know that it's something we can differentiate enough. To, to, we just don't have to follow the crowd. Well, know? I don't know. I don't understand what we're discussing, really. After, I guess is what I'm saying. Why isn't it just equality, educational equality? Because I think equity is more than equality. Equality means every kid gets a book and a pencil and a pad of paper and the same teacher. Equity means they get hopefully what they need to accomplish, to achieve. Well, that's a beautiful well, definition. I, that, I like that, that was definition. nice. I yes, yeah. that's true. <laughs> so I, I, no, I, 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 like I would that think in equal education and yeah. in equality education, everybody gets that. Everybody's equity, supposed to get what they everybody's need. everybody's not the same. You said it yourself. Everybody's not the same. I know. And, but, and the problem is with if you do a class considering equity, it may not reach every child either. No, I think equality doesn't reach every child. Equity has Why? a fighting chance. They're all equal. Yeah. They're getting equal, equal resources, equal resources. Each child does not absorb those resources in the same way. Equity helps them differentiate the need or helps the, I don't know. I mean, that sounds how I see it. I just. Um, but you know, I, I see well, that. If I may, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm Go trying for to apply it. your Go for the, the very type of example that we were talking about a few minutes ago about adapting a vocational <clears throat> program based on right. a child that was in a wheelchair. Right, right, right. You could provide an equal exactly. 
program opportunity facility to all of the kids, but that one in order to really be providing an equitable opportunity for yes. success, that one child is going to need something Extra. a little different. Yeah. And that you could then you could apply that to situations where there are people with differentiations based on uh, auditory skills, um, visual skills, other things. Mm -hmm. I, well, I see. I see. I think that is considered an equal educational opportunity, mm -hmm. right? And that's why I liked equal educational opportunities. I think those are equal educational opportunities. Everybody gets the same opportunities. With refinements or with adjustments? Well, or? you know, and all right, and you've got to realize, even where I come from, I got onto a school committee because they told us our children are too stupid to pass what? a certain test. That was one of the school that we were in. We were in the area of the town where none of us made a lot of money. So it happened, you know. And so our socio socioeconomic status limited us. But see, something has changed that now they're using equity, though, because that's all we wanted. We wanted an equal education for our children. We didn't think about equity. We didn't think about this term that I think is misused all the time. I mean, I actually like this, except for the first sentence a lot of it of the first sentence, systematically, when appropriate, use district-wide and individual school-level data, disaggregated, explain that word to me. Means it's broken out by subgroup. But it ends up aggregated, is that well, correct? It probably comes in aggravate, ag right. ag sorry. <laughs> I, mean, I just hate <laughs> words that, you know, Again, to use to use MCAS as an example, we get aggregated scores like right. what, what are our placements, right. but then we also dig down by subgroup, by you know by socioeconomic right. status, by you know whether they're special ed. So th those would, in my mind, those would be the disaggregated groups. Okay. Just out of curiosity, I googled equity versus equality, <laughs> <laughs> and the first ten or twelve um, hits were articles from places that I hadn't heard of. But then I found Merriam-Webster. I was like, well, it's a dictionary. Let's see what they say. And it's a whole article. Yeah. But, but briefly, want to know, equity refers to fairness or justice in the way people are treated, and especially freedom from bias or favoritism, as in, quote, governed according to the principle of equity, unquote. Equality refers to the quality or state of having the same rights and opportunities as in, quote, women struggle for equality, unquote. Which, agree or disagree, I think is a fairly decent description of how it's actually used. Mm -hmm. Agree, like I said, agree or disagree. I, I, I agree with you, thank you. I was just thinking, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, go ahead. Uh, um, yeah, I'm thinking, my, my hand goes up if I'm thinking. Um, it's like separate but equal, you know, in schools when they discriminated. More getting equal isn't quite the same. Same paper and pencil and books, but equity is giving the kids the opportunity to learn. And if you Which is an equal opportunity to learn. Equity, equity. But don't you think that what the description of what you just said is equity? If they, if you had a situation where I, I can't believe who told you the kids couldn't pass. <laughs> I mean, really? We went to a school committee meeting and they literally told us so the school from a socioeconomic area. So that's why the kids so not from well. the school committee said that to you. The principal of the middle school oh, said that to me at a school committee meeting and everybody at the school committee meeting agreed. Well, he shouldn't be treated equally then. <laughs> <laughs> But it, I don't know. I did just you have another question. Oh, I did. Related to not that um, the pregnant student. I, I find the writing of it is wild to me. Instead of saying the child will attend, oh, I, have this. I apologize. Oh, it is J I E. 
The school committee wishes to preserve educational opportunities for those students who may become pregnant and on take on parenting responsibilities. Pregnant students are permitted. Uh, that's what I don't like. <laughs> They're permitted to remain. How about they will remain in their regular classes and participate in extracurricular activities? Will really? means you're going to make them. Well, you should be making them. <laughs> it is equity. <that> <laughs> they have students, but permitted? I mean, that's like they have to ask permission. I didn't say it's well, got to be I, another I word. Say, say you don't, but you don't want to say will either because no. I mean, it didn't All right, but there's something, got, something else. I didn't see what you're saying. It sounds they ridiculous to, to be made. You know, will. They may do it. That's to their... They're choosing if they want to. Entitled. Well, what if the child's un underage? They should be in school. But what if they have a medical issue? What if the baby, what if the pregnancy yeah, prohibits it? Well, that's a, that's a totally other issue. Well, you know, that's, that's a May, medical. That's why May works. May allows them to do it if they can or if they want. And if, I, don't know. I just think it huh. sounds stupid to me. <laughs> I think Will is strong. Yeah, I just think Will is like it doesn't give them any right. leeway if they have a medical condition. So. Yeah, but that's common, well, sense would, common sense would dictate it, but I, I think right. that's why. Yeah, but we're not, people, we're not allowing for common sense. <laughs> Obviously, we're not. <laughs> um, I kind of like what they say with May. I think May allows it. Yeah, May allows it. Oh, should yeah. remain. I don't know. Something. <laughs> so it's a little one. But <laughs> shouldn't. I don't know. I just like I hate that word permitted. I mean, I must admit, I had a daughter who was permitted to stay in school. Well, maybe that wasn't permitted because I wasn't going to. She wasn't <laughs> going anywhere. <laughs> That's right. She was going to school. No, I can, <clears throat> I can see your objection to the word permitted. I, 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 I think May works. I like that too, Nancy. Will is too strong. Permitted is too strong. In regular classes. Permitted is patronizing. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean. It just sounds like, oh. Entitled to stay in school. I still well, I think maybe. I mean, the point is that the kid would take down because they're pregnant. I like entitled better. Entitled or eligible, either one? Eligible. I, I like me. You like me. <laughs> well, if you're in a sensitive situation. Yeah. You know, I mean, using the word entitled, I don't know, I think it's too it's, formal. It's formal. Yeah. As a student, what would you like to say? I think the word may works very well. I think it's sensitive, but also conveys the message we want to put out. I don't know. <laughs> yes, yes. Good suggestion, Nancy. My mistake. <laughs> Did you have any other questions? The child should leave us. Um, <laughs> who is it for? <laughs> Want to edit that? <clears throat> amend. Motion to edit that. To amend. Amend. J I E in the second paragraph to pregnant it. students. Uh, J I E motion to accept. May remain. J instead of the uh, permitted. Amendments. Yeah. Are committed to may instead of may, re may yeah, remain. So uh, pregnant students committed. may remain in regular classes. Mm -hmm. yeah. How about may attend? Remain. Okay, I'm going to shut up. Change the word may take out, uh, permitted to, and replace it with the word may. It says may remain or may. May remain. May yeah. remain, yeah. Take out. So, what do we do about the second one after giving birth or permitted to return? Are assumed to return? May return. Or may return? They should have to return. I mean, I can force them. If they're underage, you can force them. But that's not the point of the policy. The point of the policy is that we can't say, you can't come back because you had a baby. Right. But it shouldn't be like, oh, well, you're permitted to do that. Oh, you know, no, this. No, it's I like, agree. I don't you like should be in school. But to say, you know, they have the baby and then, you know, it's just, they absolutely, depending on the person, they might have to work, you know, to support the child to go back to school at that time. If you think you're, you must return, yeah, I think it needs to be considered. I think the purpose of policy is like to say, like Karen's point, it's saying you may return. It doesn't mean you're going to show up at their doorstop and 
so you have to. It's not. I don't think there's. If they don't, if they're underage, why would you? But that's a different they issue. That anymore. Really? Yeah. They won't even. They won't even issue a, a, a chins or a CAR anymore. For so, someone under sixteen. Really. It's, it's, For anyone. It's very, very, very rare that they'll do that now. But remember what Ms. Tobin was saying about, right. you know, like when a kid doesn't come to school, they, you know, they work with the family. There's a process for a kid who doesn't go to school. So a child who had a child, if they don't come back to school, that process is going to kick into place. It doesn't okay. have to be in this policy. We can just say, you know, are assumed to return, may return. I mean, my suggestion would be we took out our permitted to up above. Why don't we take out our permitted to and just put may return to the same academic? Yes. I mean, yeah. yeah. Yes. The point consistent. is we're not going to tell them they come, can't come back to the shop because they had a child. And we're not going to tell them they can't come to school because they're pregnant. That's the point of the policy. All right, you keep their rights for the... <laughs> yeah, you're right. The process is in place, and this is only guidelines for the process. And if they don't come back, that's a different policy. <laughs> <laughs> so I motion to accept Section J with the As additional amended. change of <clears throat> are permitted to in J I E to the word may. Second. In, in two, two places, spots, in two, in two spots, places. In the, yes, the two spots within that paragraph. All right. So, but we have a first and a second from Darren. All right. Do we have any other discussion on the other parts of that before we vote? Not. Mm -hmm. take a I just, if I could, for a minute, before we vote. Understand what you were trying to get at. And so on the JB, it says equal educational opportunity. And right. then on the JBB, we got educational equality. So you you don't like the JBB one, correct? Right. I, I don't right like the word equity? equity. You just said educational equality, but it's educational equity. Equity. I, yeah, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I just want to understand what you make sure I understood what you were originally objecting to. All right, so with, with that one amendment to the packet we have, it's been made in second. Any other discussion? Do we understand what we're changing and keeping as far as for the vote goes? Is that all those in favor? Signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? One opposed. Mm, I disagree right, that best, but I, I know where you're coming from. You see her. I'm glad you mentioned the permitting. That is not a good one. <laughs> All right, so next on the agenda is the forming of a new subcommittee for National Committee Division 8. This was something we briefly talked about in the Zoom meeting that Brian attended. And I'm um, going to let him take the floor and discuss what it's all about. Yeah, this was the first time I had it. This is Section 8 of uh, MARVA. The, um, and they have meetings, some in person, some on Zoom. The last one was on February 9th, uh, on Saturday morning. Uh, either to discuss general issues, sometimes legislative issues, sometimes general issues of concern to vocational schools in general. Um, the one that took place most recently, sometimes they make people aware of an event that's coming up. Um, it was like the last one that there was discussion about the ongoing debate about vocational school admissions policies and some of the other debates that are going on in that. There was also discussion of the upcoming uh, May 6th day in the Hill where there'll be uh, legislators will be available to meet on vocational issues. Uh, they have a cluster meeting coming up uh, May 18th at Neshoba Tech over in Westford. Um, uh, one of the interesting things I thought that they mentioned there, by the way, was they're tr about whether there's some way of uh, 
doing more training of substitute teachers so that when you have mid-year resignations of, of people in the trades areas, that's a particularly difficult fill. Um, and anyway, so the, what they have now suggested um, is that every school district have at least, every school committee um, have at least a couple of people who are identified as, as contact folks to be designated subcommittee members who would attend as many of these um, Section 8 meetings as they can. They do sometime in addition to having the very experienced. And, and Patty, you may have been on this. Were you on this at any point in the past? It seems like a lot oh, of these. what, Division 8? Division 8. I've been to the meetings and yeah. stuff like that. Okay. Yes, I have. Um, I mean, I think it's useful for us to hear about what other people mm -hmm. are, are mm -hmm. dealing with. And it's always interesting at the conference. Yeah, yeah the Section 8 meeting. Uh, so they're trying to gear it to get the Google vocational people to be more active in yeah. things that are going on. So, so what are they looking for? They're looking to have every school district identify at least a couple of people who would be there. Who would show up at the meetings. Who show up at the meetings, <laughs> at least be on, be on the email list. <laughs> right, and report. In the, yeah, exactly. Right. I think right. it's like everything else. It's and if, and if there's a need to mobilize people to go to the state house, um, I think Charlie mentioned you had been last year. Yeah, I've gone to a couple. Yeah. So, the initial one meant to come. And um, with you know, and obviously they get involved with budgeting issues. I know the the, one, the last time we had one or two members of the state legislature participated in the meeting, gave their update on whatever was going on at the state house that week that they thought maybe we might be interested in. So now they would just like to sort of formalize who their contact people are. So it's like a simple formation, unless people have objections to performing a two-person new subcommittee uh, for this. I don't see any issues with that. I don't think anybody else does. I, I, just, I just make a comment. These people have never had a meeting for the last 10 years, except for at the annual <laughs> state. <laughs> you know, conference. There, there is a new person in chat. Yes, I know. That's I know I that. That's, I think some of this is solid. Yeah. Who, and I have to say, I know what you're saying as far as Juicy just there, but I know, like last year when I went on the show, but they had, right. it was like an informal one right. because of the um, oh God. when they when the legend when they were trying to force that bill that at the lottery. Oh, the lottery. And then there was yeah. a big thing. Yeah. They had seen that. that. That's kind of what. Right. It was in more and more, but I haven't been on that long, but yeah, they usually just do meeting at yeah. the, they actually, all. they would meet in also division one, which we're also in, you know, they would constantly, they would meet like three or four times a year. And I'll tell you, when Ed Reform came in and they didn't push against it enough, most of us just said, we're not, we don't attend meetings anymore. <laughs> you know, that was a big thing because mm -hmm. we thought it was very unfair that the business group had decided to change, you know, how school committees worked because we were all dishonest, which obviously <laughs> was not true. I mean, yeah, there were some, but we all weren't dishonest. And so, and I think that's when everybody started to not have meetings anymore. No one was showing up because I had gone, I still continued to go to some of the meetings and no one would be there. But yeah, I mean, it'd be nice if we could redo this. I would consider it. Yeah, they're not on the other side of the state every other day. <laughs> Their next uh, in-person thing they're scheduled for Westford, so they're, they're oh, it's uh, right there. There, which is May 18th, uh, for so legislative action discussions or something. Patty's one volunteer. Do we have a second one? I mean, if you want Brian I'm willing to do it again, all right. Then oh, good. That'll be. I'll add that to the thing, and then the next chairman can make it permanent on. Whoever he selects for all of them. He or she. <laughs> he or she. I apologize. Oh, question. leave me alone. No. A question of clarification. Is this, Charlie, is this a subcommittee or is it just yeah, two people who are going to be in contact with them? You're not going to have meetings. It's just a matter that there are two people who are available to the state group. <clears throat> no, I show up at the meeting. Yeah. It's, I think I it's mean, going to be. You're not going to meet here. Each other. No. Well, it could. It's going to be all over the place. You know what? We could host one. Yeah. I'm assuming. Patty, you're going to go eat coffee. Yeah. I'm assuming we could host. Maybe a better word, Charlie. Representatives. 
Kind of like we have a representative oh, to the Health and Wellness Committee. We right. have a representative to the CPAC. Anyway, I just think it's because they look at a formal item so that, so, okay. so that they can report, like any other okay. subject, they can report back to the full committee. Yeah, and so the full committee can decide what they need to do on whatever the issue yeah, is, or how we should address yeah. it, or suggestions from mm -hmm. the subcommittee. Okay. All right. Other than the subcommittee, if you want to call something else, I don't know. No, it's as good a name as any, I guess. Do we have to have a vote on this? It is, called, it is considered a vote on the list. No. Actually, it's not just for no, 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 I think we, <laughs> yeah, if you remember, we, like we drop off subcommittees in the past, it's not that has to be formally voted on, right? No. I didn't think so. Yeah. Okay. All good. Next, we'll go with. Permission to post a maintenance position. So I, I know this has been discussed. Um, it's in the FY25 budget, which we, we had talked about. So Jenna and I have been talking. We've been looking at what's left in our overtime account for the current fiscal year. Um, we have a member of that crew that's going to be out long term um, for close to a month. Um, yeah, and what, what, we, what we're asking is to potentially advertise this now. Um, and try to bring somebody on and potentially get them trained by the end of April so that when um, when May rolls around, we're going to be down a body anyways. Um, and again, we anticipate, I mean, by the time we advertise and we hire somebody, we're probably looking at, what do we figure, eight, eight weeks? Mm -hmm. uh, eight, to, eight to maybe 10 weeks of this current fiscal year to pay their salary. Um, and Jen, I, I don't know if you have the exact figure for what's left in the overtime budget, but um, we figured that that was, there's more than enough money in the overtime budget to cover the cost of that individual. And it will defray the cost of overtime for our current right. maintenance employees if there's an extra person. Are we going to be able to find someone who wants a job for just two months? Oh, no, 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 this would be, we want to, we want to advertise early. We have it in the FY25 budget. So we're hiring an additional person for 2025. No. But right. we, we want to have like them come in now. early because yeah. somebody's going to be out. And that's, I mean, again, that's also, I think people realize it's the busy, so we have all of our spring sports events. Uh, you know, we have lacrosse and we have, you know, um, we have softball, baseball, track and field, all of those things. So our maintenance staff typically gets stretched um, and are asked to work overtime anyways. Um, and then, like Jenna said, this this could potentially offset some of the costs that we're paying there. Um, and we're also getting into graduation season. And, you know, I mean, there's, there's a lot of stuff that falls on this department um, through the month of May and, you know, at least the first half of June. Um, so I, I think we're, I, I'm here to ask for, for permission to go ahead and, and maybe bring somebody in um, you know, right here. two months, 10 weeks, whatever, whatever it works out to be, depending on when we can hire somebody. I'll make a motion to support Tony's request. Second. Um, second. Uh, okay, wording. Yeah. Any further discussion? I thought all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Thank you. Okay, next we have the results of the superintendent director evaluation. I don't have them. We can pass it down. It's on the packet. Yeah, if you know, I don't know if anybody has it. I'll take another. It says they did come in the packet, so I'll open it up if anybody has any questions. I'll just say right. <laughs> I don't know if I missed that. Anybody have any questions on, on what they see? I, overall, I found it very easy to use, Karen. You were right on. Um, user friendly. Took me maybe a half hour just sitting there, even less, because I may have I may typed a few things. But I thought Charlie was. Um, it was a good document. It was yeah, I think it's a good yeah, exercise. Uh, Gets us thinking. Really Tony's smooth. input, I think, uh, it's a, a fair a fair assessment. Yeah, and, it was, and I think it was smooth. Like I said, the new way we did it, it was very smooth. Very user friendly. 
if and I mean, if people have suggestions for stuff that you want to change, please let me know. I mean, yeah, it was, um, sure. it was yeah, kind of our inaugural flight of this thing, but um, no, I don't remember. I know, um, last year was our first year, so I don't recall if uh, we voted to accept this if we needed to. The policy, no, we wrong? We, no. no, because I, I think what happens to we use the, the, the MAS form, but now. We've tweaked and used our own, using our own one. Yeah. I think it just has to be discussed at an open meeting, which it is currently being. And uh, and I don't think that has to be an official vote because if it comes by the public wow. record, everybody's read it. Tony's read it, um, so it goes into his file. That's what I thought. But like, so we just yeah, that's right. Yeah, I want to try to do I think that's fine. All right. Right. An observation. I thought there was a useful comment. I think it was maybe by Taryn that somehow in the future we think about whether there's any instrument or mechanism by which we can get somewhat broader input from the school community in terms of the staff and other administrators, some mechanism. Um, we, we sort of have a, this is very, Typical of most schools, I think we have a kind of a closed loop. The school superintendent is communicating, superintendent director is communicating with the school committee. The school committee, goes, oh, I, I know what I know. I know what he's telling us, but we we make some guesses. Quite frankly, I think there were a couple of comments that were very interesting about, you know, whether they be relations with staff or relations with uh, teachers, students, whatever it may be. Maybe we just need to think about if there's other sources of input we need to be hearing from um we tend to assume that if if nobody's coming to our meetings and signing up for comment or whatever <laughs> that everything is going great and maybe it is we don't want to sit i don't want to suggest otherwise but it's something we may want to do and how you do that and how you make sure that it's representative and it's not just oh i got an anonymous opportunity to take my shot at the super but anyway it's it's something to think about and i also yeah. don't mean for us to butt our heads into places that are not our business right there's plenty of times when a, a, a person of any category comes to us and says i'm upset about the color of the table and our answer is i'm very sorry the color of our table is not under our purview and i'm not saying that that should change because I don't want to decide the color of the table. <laughs> um, so just to, um, in the school improvement plan, and, and I know Principal Cook is working on the update for next year, there is a piece in there about a mechanism to collect feedback from oh. students, from parents, from staff members. Um, we are currently planning to try to pilot the, the vehicle, the format with staff this spring. Um, I think at, at a previous meeting, um, Ms. Lawson had asked about bringing something on. So we, we've identified a, uh, it's actually a free platform. Um, we ran into a little bit of a hiccup because we wanted to edit some of the questions because they didn't really apply to a vocational school. You know, they weren't worded for a vocational school. Um, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out a way to take their questions and kind of create our own survey out of them. And it, anyways, but um, that is something that is under discussion. It's something that I know Jess and the um, school council are looking at. And I know it's something that um, myself and, and the leadership team has talked about piloting uh, this spring to try to get um, and, and see how it works. And, you know, and if, if it goes well and there's there's potential for that, then we would look at, you know, possibly pushing it out to different groups of stakeholders. Now, whether we do them all at once or we kind of systematically add a group as we go, um, I don't think that's been decided yet, but uh, that, that was discussed. Thank you. I think that's a valid point, though. I mean, the jobs I've worked in different sectors, there's always like your direct supervisor, which is in our case for you is the school committee. But I think there's also feedback that's sought. So I think to Brian, I think it is not to say you're doing anything wrong. I'm just saying that in order to get a fully encompassing view, again, you, some things you take with a grain of salt, but I think it is helpful to kind of have that survey results maybe as part of the, you know, this could be your main focus, but you know, this whether it's you know staff or it's, it's good to hear that feedback. Yeah, I agree. Anybody else? If not, I think we're good. Thank you.
Can, can I say something before we go into executive yeah, or uh, next? I know it's Christine and Cheryl's last meetings. Um, is there anybody to say something? Yeah. yeah, just you know, but I just want to say it's been a pleasure working with you guys. And uh, I know the policy stuff, you guys did a huge thing, Christine, with the, the budget know, stuff, audit, huge. you on the capital or the budget, uh, the facilities um, stuff. And I know it's been a pleasure working with you guys. You've got a significant commitment to the committee. It's, uh, you know, big loss, big shoes to fill, and, uh, you know, made the last three years more pleasurable. I, assume everybody feels the same way and definitely uh, mm -hmm. thank you very much you will be missed absolutely come on back you always welcome back well, maybe she probably will come back <laughs> you know we should yeah, enjoy your work Christine well, thank, thank you so much speech, Christine I will yeah, I appreciate it we all appreciate it I think working we all working together very well and the, that policy manual was very big undertaking. Make no mistake about that. So we have to appreciate all of you. So there's a lot of you got the old book, you're getting the new stuff the state's giving you, you kind of comparing it, seeing what is best for this school. It was a lot of time consuming things, and I hope that isn't the reason why you left. I made it too. I was the policy manual for you, and I could not find a. Oh, really? Picture frame strong enough to hold the thing. Especially, you know, driving the ship along with all the, the other committee members that a lot of time put into it for all of them. Thank you. Policy committee, thank you. I would just like to say that um, three years ago when I started, we, we had gone through a bunch of superintendents and it, we had a lot of change going on. And I feel like at the end of the three years, like, we have our captain and our first mate, and we're headed in this great direction. We're in such a more stable, good place now um, than we were three years ago. And uh, it feels good to be like leaving that to move forward to that's all just thank you well and i mean i i would say i mean you you two were obviously part of this group when when you guys took a chance on me i mean i was kind of an unknown commodity and uh, um I, I mean i'm sorry to see both of you go but it's um you know i wish you all the best and um i, I would i would recommend i would echo the same sentiment it's it's, it's been good i've been involved with, with each one of you on different subcommittees and, and through different things and um Thank you. I mean, I, I appreciate the opportunity, and um, I, I hope I, I hope I continue to represent the things that that you wanted in this role when you guys hired me. So, thank you, Cheryl. And I've enjoyed, like, I feel like our school committee is special because we have so many varied viewpoints. Like, I don't always agree with where people are. No, we're at. not always equal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there's equity. Is there equity? 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 Is equity on this? I'm going to torture you now, Pat. No, I want to be equal. We're all equal. All right, but I feel right. like, like we have teachers, we have attorneys, we have, you know, business people, we have public people, we have all these different, you know, viewpoints. We have parents, we have you know, just so many viewpoints that come to the table and I feel like we listen to each other a lot. Like we might not agree, but we hear the other person um, and take it into consideration. I appreciate, I just appreciated that about this group of people. So oh, thank fun. you for that. Thank you. thank you for giving up the time to be part of this yeah. you and Cheryl. Thank you. Thank you. Being involved welcome. with this, Thank you for the this special place here. Yeah. Personally, this has been, uh, I didn't know what I was getting into, mm -hmm. but I've learned so much. And uh, just really listening to, you know, the different, uh, you know, issues that are happening and being able to contribute and being part of the, the selection committee for the superintendent and oh, Jenna sure. being involved in, in, in uh, making the change with the business manager, as well as other really big changes. I really feel honored and I'm really um, very, I feel like we're we're leaving the committee in a better condition than it was when we arrived. So, so thank you. All right. Very
good, thank you. And I brought cookies besides Karen did. Karen brought cookies, but I brought the uh, Mr. Chairman, before we go to executive session, for future agenda items, I had discussed with uh, Mr. McIntosh, maybe we were talking about maybe looking at the questions that were have been part of the admissions policy. Just kind of maybe it's, I, you know, there were some issues came up and we wanted to maybe just put it on the table for April. It was also, would you, do you want to invite Dave Norkowitz in? Are we going, not going down that road? Uh, we can. I mean, okay. by then, uh, yeah, freshman placement will have kind of you know, shaken out. They're making out. the decision this weekend, right? Uh, yeah, over the weekend, yeah. So next so, next week we should we should okay. have work. Right. Well, those are my two suggestions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Brian, do you want to go first? No, go. So my last future agenda item is um, I would love for the, the uh, school committee and for the administrators to consider um, planning something annually in the area of um, staff culture. Um, so I know that there are all hands meetings and all sorts of, um, you know, uh, staff meetings. But, I, you know, thinking, you know, it might be nice to have at the end of the year for all personnel um, having a, you know, an end of end of the year or end of summer banquet of some sort with maybe a year in review with a really fun video. This is, you know, all snippets of what happened this year. And then even I was thinking it might be nice um, at the same time to, you know, express appreciation and make any, you know, special announcements. It might be a nice time to recognize uh, years of service. Um, and so where I, you know, work, we um, have a tradition of giving out a coin. So I was thinking Metal Fab might be able to create a five-year, 10-year, 15, and call those people up and say, you know, congrat, you know, invite them up, everyone, five years, and, and just a round of applause. And just, you know, they won't have to prepare a presentation or take notes. They just come and, and celebrate uh, the entire uh, personnel all together. And can so, we come? Yes. So that's <laughs> just my signature. Well, right now. Well, we actually do that on the yeah. last day. I mean, we, we also hand out, we hand out attendance checks. We do, we we do service awards. awards. Yeah. STA has an end of year cookout, yeah. usually right in that last week of school as well. Yeah, yeah, we can. I do, I do like the, the coin idea and some other stuff. But yeah, yeah. Um, last year, I think we ended up doing that the day before the last day because the last day was a half day. And we were just, we wanted to get people out of here for the summer. We, we didn't want to stand between them and summer vacation. Um, so we, we did it the day before. But yeah, yeah th those those are great. 25 year award was something. It came along with Mr. Lyons put in there, yeah, and I and I, yeah, it's great. It was a great idea as people started working more and more. I got my picture of my dad. It's beautiful. And so even, um, even to include, you know, the, the facilities folks mm -hmm. and the janitors yeah. and and all of the things. True. We, yeah. we always try to invite everyone. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Brian. You mentioned one um, somebody to have in as we've been having the various uh, representatives. Um, uh, maybe somebody from the library, um, which has a role to play in the building, but we know it does. And there's been, you know, the, our library and just got an award and has, and uh, it'd be nice to hear because I think, and I think this also came out of the statement of uh, interest. There was some discussion about the library and, you know, how it, it's challenges by the building. And yet it seems to be a place that plays an active role in the kids day-to-day -day life here so it might be good to hear from them what about the nurse's office too is that something I, I mean we could there's a lot of there's a lot of privacy thing yeah. i mean yeah she could do an overview of what yeah, just overview how many of kids we yeah. typically see yeah. or something like that um do we want to push that to i mean that's yeah you want to have three at this no, 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 no that's the same with the the, the library that's, that's, man, not, that's may can be pushed off. We've it's got April, time. May, and yeah, we got next year. Yeah, and then we'll still be here. I know, we'll still be here. And yeah, we'll still be here. yeah, you mentioned yeah, we, yes, we asked, and I, I kind of got a, I got a no go on okay. on that response. Uh, really? I didn't, I didn't think you were gonna. Well, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, 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 I roll. It's, oh, not, it's too sorry. far outside her work hours. Well, there's there's also some very specific things in our in our um, okay. memorandum of understanding, and I think I think that oh, their like their concern forward. was that they they didn't want to put themselves in that. Okay, okay. okay. Well, try, so. try. I, we did ask. Thanks for asking. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? We'll talk about. 
I guess uh, just to follow up on Cheryl's, um, I would just put forth that um, I met with the special education PAC um, and we'll need a new special education liaison based on um, the, our, our discussion with uh, Christine Tobin and Kevin Caruso. Um, as well as like having met with them and the fact that post COVID there's been, a, you know, an uptick in social emotional stuff um, to maybe in the future consider adding back somehow the BCBA so that it's more available because it did seem to be a big help. Was that something you were looking into? Any other time? No, it wasn't. I mean, so I, I to be completely honest, look at different positions. Uh, we're looking at different positions. It, it is next to impossible to staff those. We we had somebody who was not a Shawshank employee, who was a contract employee that was paid under mm -hmm. a grant, uh, who had made a long term <clears throat> commitment to us within a period of a couple of months, left us high and dry. Um, there are not a lot of people out there that are doing that type of work. There's not a lot of people that are certified in that area. Um, I know um, Peabody has had an ad running for about six years straight um, for, for a BCB for a district-wide BCBA. Um, we have even had difficulties filling. We have a grant-funded position um, for a uh, for a school um, adjustment counselor. Uh, which has been next to impossible to try to to try to fill as well. There is, there's, there seems to be a, a big void in staffing. Is it too specialized? Is that what? I don't know. We've we've tried we've tried to partner with outside agents. Like there's there's agencies that say you know we'll provide these services to your school as a consulting thing. Um, we've gone through three or four of them and they can't find anybody. Uh, we did have a woman that came in um, in a part-time capacity for a period of time uh, to kind of take up the slack from, from when Teresa had left. Um, she was here for a short period of time and resigned. Um, there's just, there's so much turnover. It, it's, it's very, very difficult to find people with, with that skill set that want to work in a high school. Um, they're, they're few and far between. If we, I mean, it's not us. It's, no. it's if, if we were to hire a full-time BCBA, I do not know that we could put them on the STA pay scale and be able to attract somebody. So, I mean, we're you're talking far and above. I mean, there that's for somebody to do 180 or 184 days. You're probably looking at 150, 165 thousand dollars a year, um, which does not fit in our teachers' pay scale at all. So and there's there's some this and again we've looked at it we've had a lot of conversations um, and we are we are trying to figure out more ways to support we we know those needs are there we know we have kids that are presenting with certain um, behaviors and, and and need those supports um, but it's it's getting pretty tricky to figure out how to make that happen. Well, I know you guys will work on it in the future. So yeah, we just just thank, you. Thank, you. Yeah. thank you for the suggestion. First of all, yeah. supply and demand. Yeah. And, and who knows? Two years from now, this could be a completely different conversation. Maybe there's a whole bunch of them that are, you know, cool. ready, ready, ready to blossom, yeah. and we can we can tap into that. But, but right now, um, we haven't had much luck. Anybody else have any future? If not, this item is going into executive session. So I'll make a motion, Mr. Chairman, and we enter executive session to discuss non-union contracts. Will we return? We'll potentially return to vote. Potentially to vote. Return to potentially vote. And adjourn. And adjourn. How's that? Thank you. Second. With that second, we'll take a roll call. So we
Hey, we're back in uh, from out of executive session back into regular meeting and okay, I, I you ready? Okay, I make uh, this motion that we adopt this contract of employment as written for Anthony McIntosh, our superintendent. Anthony. <laughs> Second. So we'll say, do we have any discussion? No, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous? No. Make a motion to adjourn, Mr. No, Chair. No, 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 no. no. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Sorry, Karen. Yeah, other non union contract. Yes. I make a motion that we give our administrators sick leave buyback and longevity pay in their contract starting as July 1st. As written. written. Okay, do I have a second? Written written second amended. Yeah. Yes, yes, written and amended. amended. It was amended, yes. Yeah. And then we have a second. Nancy was a second. Nancy. You've yeah. taken it, right? Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous? Mr. Chairman, yes. I make a motion we adjourn. <laughs> Mr. 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 meeting. No discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Wish no. Christine and Cheryl the best. Thank you.